Okay, g'day all and welcome to my new studio and uh, a brand new series on a topic that uh, is very close to my heart, something super, super interesting and really important nowadays. The topic is AI and in particular neural networks. Uh, over the course of this series, we're gonna be completely demystifying uh, the way that uh, modern AI works, neural networks and other methods for getting computers to uh, presumably act intelligently. <laughs> Uh, we're going to be implementing a high performance AI library. Uh, I will be making the source code available for the library as it's developed uh, for the Patreons as a big thank you for supporting this channel. So for today, what I want to do is talk about the way that biological real neural networks work. Uh, we're going to be talking about axons, we're going to be talking about dendrites and synapses, and then we're going to throw all of that out the window because that's got absolutely nothing to do with the way that <laughs> artificial neural networks work. And then we're going to talk about calculus and gradient descent and derivatives. And then we're going to throw all of that out the window because that has almost nothing to do with the way that neural networks are implemented. So finally, we're going to touch on the real mechanisms that are used to implement high performance neural networks. So I hope this is interesting for people as a little introduction to the field of modern AI. All right, so let's start by looking at biological neural networks. So this is supposedly uh, what neural, what artificial neural networks are based upon. Uh, a neuron is a type of cell uh, in the human body, in uh, the body of many, many different animals. Uh, the neuron has a cell body which is the main part of the cell. Okay, so the cell body has what's called a bunch of dendrites coming out of it. And it's also got an axon, which is a long tail-like section. Now, at the end of the tail, there's a bunch of axon terminals. And these terminals connect to the dendrites of another cell. So it's in this way that the neurons are all connected together. We get all of these axon terminals connected to dendrites from another neuron. And then that neuron, in turn, has a bunch of... Uh, axon terminals connected to other neurons. So the point where an axon terminal connects to a dendrite is called a synapse. I think also the, the word synapse indicates the actual firing of a signal between the two. Yeah, so what ends up happening is that a signal builds up inside the cell body, a voltage if you will, um, which is the sum of all of the dendrites which are connected to the previous uh, neurons. So this sum builds up, or this charge builds up, and when it reaches a certain voltage, a certain threshold, then the neuron fires its signal down its axon, where it's read by all of the connecting neurons. Yeah, so that's pretty much all that it is, just a, a network or a web of connected neurons all building up charges and firing signals to each other. Now, I think it's really, really interesting, but I think uh, biological neural networks, I think they're, uh, they're electrochemical, which is absolutely bizarre. This is chemical reactions happening on just a nanoscale. And it's interesting too that it happens so quickly. Like you'd think if it was chemical reactions, it would take some time. But if you've ever stubbed your toe or something like that, you know that the signal gets to your brain fairly quickly, within a fraction of a second. Uh, so it's obviously really quick. Uh, so this basic picture of a neuron that we're, that we're often presented is what's called a bipolar neuron. So it has its dendrites up one end and its axon connections down the other end. That's bipolar. So that's not the whole story. And I think every neuroscientist in the world would have to agree that we don't understand how biological neurons work. Uh, there's, there's massive neurons. So there's a neuron, for instance, connecting your big toe all the way up to your spine, uh, for example. There's other types of neurons that seem to web their way across almost the entirety of the brain, uh, just connected to millions, millions upon millions of, of different neurons, uh, tying everything together. Um, there's other types of neurons that are called anaxonic neurons. And I don't think these are well understood, but these are neurons that don't seem to have an axon. Uh, or they've got an axon, but the axons are indistinguishable from the dendrites. So the exact mechanisms, you know, the exact workings of these things is not well understood. It's not well known. Uh, really interesting field of, of study. Uh, biological neural networks. Yeah, but so the, so the image that we're often given of a biological neural network is just a, a net of these connected neurons, all reading some stimulus from the dendrites, building up a charge and then firing down the axon for other neurons in turn to read those values. 
I think it's interesting, but that's not Turing complete. I mean, that can't compute everything. So, so as a computer scientist, I sort of look at that and I say to myself, well, that couldn't possibly be the way that it works. And uh, indeed it's not. There's, there's a lot more complexity going on uh, inside biological brains. But uh, apparently, or supposedly, this, uh, this basic picture of the bipolar neuron is where we get uh, modern artificial neural networks from. Okay, so that's the basic picture of, of a biological neural network, a bunch of connected bipolar neurons, each summing up their values and, you know, firing signals down their axons for the other neurons. Now we're going to throw all of that out the window because that's got pretty much nothing to do with the way that an artificial neural network works. So an artificial neural network is constructed as a series of layers, and we call these things neurons, but really, I mean really, if we be honest, uh, they don't have a lot to do with neurons. Now, but anyway, this is what we do. So in an artificial neural network, we've got uh, a series of layers. These are generally drawn, drawn from uh, left to right. And uh, I'll put a picture somewhere, wherever my Okay, so the left-hand side we have what's called an input layer, and then we have a series of hidden layers, and finally on the very right-hand side we have what's called the output layer. And every single neuron in one layer is connected to every neuron of the previous layer. Uh, this is a fully connected neural network, so there's other ways of doing this, but in a fully connected basic neural network, uh, every neuron from one layer is connected to every neuron of the next layer. And the connections between every neuron has a weight. So the neurons themselves have, have a value or a charge that's building up. Uh, it's really just a number. So in the next layer, every neuron has a connection or this line depicted just here. And the thing about this connection here is that it has a weight on it. So what the neuron does in this first hidden layer is it sums up all of its weights multiplied by the values of the neurons in the previous layer. So this top neuron just here of the hidden layer will multiply the value of the top neuron in the input. It will multiply that by 0.1, since the weight just here is 0.1. And then it'll multiply the second neuron value from the input layer. It'll multiply that by 0.5, since the weight there connecting the two is 0.5. And in this way, it will sum up all of the weights multiplied by the values from the input layer, and it'll produce a grand total. Um, they actually add a bias as well, but we'll get to all of that when we're implementing this stuff. So each neuron in the hidden layer multiplies its weights by all of the corresponding values from the neurons in the previous layer. And then that sum there is the, is the accumulated value, or, or that's the value inside the cell of the neuron. That's basically the idea. And the same with the second neuron. So the second neuron down here has a whole bunch of different weights. Yeah, maybe we've got 0.2 uh, weight between this neuron and the first neuron of the input layer. And maybe 0.3 here and 0.5 here. So the second neuron does its own sum. Yeah, just multiplying the weights by the input values and computes its own total. Uh, when we come to implement this, there's actually, there's a thing called a, an activation function. So we actually get to choose some operation that we perform on these sums. But basically all that's happening is every neuron in each layer is performing a multiplication of all of its weights with the values of the previous layer and just accumulating that sum. Yeah, so that by the time we get to the output layer, um, yeah, the output layer two is just the same as the other layers. It just accumulates a bunch of sums and outputs some number. So that process of accumulating sums from the left-hand side, the input, through the uh, hidden layers and to the output, that process is called forward propagation. And what we do, if we want our neural network to do something useful, um, we take the input. Um, so say our input just here is a picture of a walrus, for example. So if our network is supposed to say what it's a picture of, and say for a picture of a walrus, the output layer says that it's a tree or something like that, uh, then we compute some error. We give that output layer some error value. So based on the values of those output neurons, we compute some error value. And then it's that error value that we're trying to minimize. So if the input is a picture of a walrus and our neural network says that that's a tree, then we might say, no, that's very bad neural network. You've done hopelessly bad and your error value is 86 million. And then what we do, the next step is to push that error value backwards through the, hello little ant. What about no mate? Uh, we compute some error value. And the next step is to 
push that error value backwards through the network and slightly change all of the weights between the neurons in order that the next time we show it a picture of a walrus, uh, it's closer to the real answer at the output. Uh, the process of pushing the error value backwards and allowing each neuron to figure out uh, some adjustment of its weights, uh, this process is called backpropagation. Okay, so in order for a neuron to figure out how much it should change a particular weight, uh, what it's got to do is figure out how much of the error of the final output uh, was caused by that weight. So each neuron has to figure out how much um, the weights contributed to the final error. And the way that they do that is, uh, is with calculus, a process called gradient descent. If this weight just here is 90, and this weight down here is 0 0.1, if the output is completely wrong, then what you could say is you could say that it's probably this 90 here that's causing it. Yeah, since the weight to this 90 is nine times more influential than the weight from the 0 0.1. Yeah, so what you might do in that situation is toggle the, the 90 a lot. You might change that neuron's weight quite a bit. But the 0 0.1, which doesn't seem to be contributing very much to this incorrect answer, uh, you mightn't change that very much at all. So it becomes a process of discovering exactly what caused the error to be so high and then trying to toggle the weights in order to reduce that error. Uh, the process is called backpropagation and it's really the job of, of calculus. Yeah, so we're taking a lot of derivatives here. We're saying how much does a change in this weight change the value in the error, the total error of the network. And then we're toggling each of those little weights by a tiny, tiny amount in the hopes that next time we feed forward, next time we give the neural network a picture of a walrus, uh, we hope that the error is reduced and eventually the neural network can learn to recognize a walrus. <laughs> So that's the idea. It's a lot of calculus, really. Um, a lot of chain rule, figuring out how much error um, the weights individually contribute to the final error, and then altering those weights a little bit. Okay, so that's the basic idea just there. A lot of calculus, a lot of gradient descent, a lot of chain rule, a lot of fiddling with little tiny weights, but we throw all of that out the window because that's not really how neural networks are implemented. <laughs> So the big secret, the biggest secret of uh, high performance neural networks, um, it's matrix maths. Uh, it's, uh, it's just a bunch of matrix multiplication. So if you really want to implement a high performance neural network, um, you don't want to think about it like that. You really, really don't. All you really want to do is uh, implement a very fast, very strong and correct uh, matrix maths library. Okay, so how can I say that it's matrix maths? Well, if we look at this picture just here of the neural network, so what we're doing is multiplying each of the values from the neurons in the input layer by their connection weights, and we're performing a sum of that entire uh, list of, uh, of products. Now, you might be familiar with a little process called the dot product. <laughs> um, the dot product does exactly that. It's a sum of multiplications and that also happens to be the exact mechanism for the matrix product. When you multiply two matrices together or you produce the matrix product, it's nothing but dot product. So you see that really we can take all of the neurons out of this. Uh, we don't have to think about individually adjusting weights. So what you end up with is really just a, a bunch of matrices and matrix products. And this is super, super important to high performance because it means that instead of worrying about toggling every individual weight, trying to get these things right, uh, pushing these things through their little sigmoid functions and then pushing them down the axons, I mean, instead of thinking about any of that stuff, when you break it all down, uh, all you really need to implement a high performance and most likely correct a uh, neural network, all you really need is uh, a really strong uh, vector and matrix library. Yeah, so that's what we're going to be working towards throughout these videos. Uh, I also want to add some other interesting mechanisms to the AI library whilst we go, but we'll get into that um, a little bit later. This is for logic propagation. Um, so I think it's important to supplement neural networks with, with other ways to compute things. Um, <laughs> otherwise, they don't tend to perform very well. Yeah, if you look at something like a basic neural network compared to a convolutional neural network, 
the the way that a convolutional neural network is able to recognize uh, images, it's so, so much uh, faster. It performs so much better than a regular neural network. So what we end up with is, um, yeah, just the basic neural network, but then we have to supplement that with other tools, other mechanisms to compute things. Um, so I'm going to be putting up the source code and the binaries for the library whilst we uh, develop it. So initially it's going to be slow and buggy, but um, that's just the way that these things are. Uh, I'll be putting that up for the Patreons uh, as early access. So if you want to support what I'm doing, jump over to Patreon. And, uh, and other than that, very exciting stuff. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> Have a good one. And then you could have a third hidden layer, a fourth hidden layer. You could have 50 hidden layers if you want. Why don't you have a million of them? <laughs> Imagine that. All right, but eventually, at the other side, once you've done all of your hidden layers, uh, we've got this output layer. And the output layer is exactly the same as all of the hidden layers, except...